Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is a video in the uh, series from Dermoscopy Made Simple. Tonight we're going to talk about Lentigo Maligna. Now, Lentigo Malignus you're going to see quite commonly. They'll present on the face, it'll be uh, or there or other sun exposed areas, mainly in the elderly and you'll probably see they've got a variety of pigmented lesions. Now the ones that are a uniform color are usually solar lentigos. Ones that have variability in color uh, within the lesion are possible lenticle malignants. Then you've got to put your dermatoscope on them and see if you can see the features of lenticle malignant. Now dermatoscopically they usually begin with perifollicular dots of pigment around the hair follicles and these form grey circles and then you get subsequent filling in of the perifollicular space either by grey, black or brown pigment and ultimately obliteration of these follicular openings. Now all the terminologies that describe this process include annular glandular structures and rhomboid formation and we'll come to these when we uh, see some of the images. So let's get into this. Here's a pigmented lesion in this man's nose, a little bit of darker pigmentation there, otherwise fairly uniform. When you put your dermatoscope on it though, it looks like this. Here, there's some perifollicular pigmentation in the form of grey circles. There's some others down here, there's some others up here. There's also some pigmentation around the follicle and extending in between other follicles. And when you start to see this varying perifollicular pigmentation and grey circles, it points to a lenticle maligna. The best way to biopsy this is a shave biopsy, so that you're virtually shaving the whole lesion off. These heal very well and uh, hardly scar at all. And because it's a very thin lesion, a shave biopsy is adequate to uh, give, you the, give you pathologist adequate tissue to make the diagnosis. This one is a little bit more obvious. Let's make the image just a touch bigger and then have a look at the clinical. Here you can see the, the pigment, pigmented area here. It actually extends over a, a fair area but when you have a look at it with the dermatoscope and this is the area we're going to concentrate on here then this is what you see. This is the grey pigmentation round the uh, follicle openings sometimes forming grey circles. And when you see these grey circles, there's four things you have to consider. Lentigo malignus, top of the list, lichen planus like keratosis, pigmented uh, solar keratosis, and pigmented intraepidermal carcinoma. Pigmented solar keratosis is usually a bit rough on the surface, whereas lentigo maligna isn't. Um, but you really can't be certain that that's a lentical maligna just on that picture and you need to do a shave biopsy there too to make your diagnosis before you decide on your treatment. I'm not going to go into treatments just now, that's for another day and another time. So grey circles, one of the hallmarks of lentical maligna. This one clinically is a lot more obvious. Um, if you look at the uh, lesion here, you'll see darker area of pigmentation, lighter area here. So a variably pigmented facial lesion, you stick your, your, your dermatoscope on it, you see here the perifollicular pigmentation, here you'll see some grey dots and again perifollicular pigmentation, perifollicular circles. This bit up here though, there's your follicular openings in a very uniform brown colour. And uh, this is a simple lentigo dermatoscopically. These bits, though, are lentigo maligna. So your dermatoscope's very useful at picking these early changes. This is an interesting one as well. It shows a variety of features. Let's just flick along here first. There's the clinical lesion. It's a big lesion, really. If you were to simply put your dermatoscope in this area, it may simply show features of a solar lentigo. In here, with the varying pigmentation, you may show, uh, show some of the early perifollicular accentuation of pigment that you uh, get in lentigo maligna. And this area here, which is darker and slightly raised, 
it's suggesting a lentigo maligna melanoma, an invasive component to the lentigo maligna. And if we look along here, you'll see some pigment dots here. You'll see what are called rhomboid structures here. This is where you get filling in of the perifollicular space with pigment creating a sort of rhomboidal structure. Here you've almost got obliteration of the perifollicular space, um, suggesting a thicker or at least a more extensive area of lentigo malignant, perhaps uh, lentigo malignant melanoma. Now remember, lentigo malignant is a melanoma in situ. So what about this case? Here's an elderly lady who has had a skin graft put in there because her lentigo malignant was extending up onto a conjunctival surface, and you don't want that to happen. If it gets into the conjunctiva, you've got big problems. So a plastic surgeon took that portion out and stuck a skin graft there. Now the problem is she's subsequently gone on to develop areas of invasive melanoma within her lentical malignant. She's had one cut out there. This is almost certainly another one here. Um, but the old lady didn't want all of this whole area out with a graft. Um, she was happy enough to have this done. She subsequently died uh, without coming to any harm from, uh, from any of this. Then you've got a case like this one. <laughs> this lesion grows sl slowly over a period of 17 years. It had been biopsied initially and was reported as a solar lentigo, and everyone believed that until it eventually reached this size, and a new doctor took one look at it and uh, said, no, 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 no. Um, this portion that you're seeing here corresponds to this area here. And if you have a close look, here are your gray circles of early lentigo maligna, more diffuse pigment in between the follicles. Um, so you've got dense perifollicular pigment there uh, getting rid of the follicular openings. And you've got this blue-black structureless area extending, you know, corresponding to this area here. What was interesting is this varied from lentigo maligna through invasive melanoma back to lentigo maligna again. And the maximum thickness was about 0.65 of a millimeter. So it was all less than one millimeter thick. He had the whole area excised and the graft put on there, and he's been fine. But it just shows you how slowly these lesions can grow before areas become invasive. 17 years. Off the face, um, there's another structure you should be able to recognize, and it's this one. This was the lesion here clinically. You know, diffuse pigmentation, little areas of accentuation. You look at it with the dermatoscope, difficult to say that that's lentigo maligna just looking with the dermatoscope. But if you see these structures, these are called polygons. And go back and look at the video of those at the uh, beginning of this series. Then if you see these on extrafacial uh, pigmented lesions, then it's very suggestive of lentiginous melanoma or lentigo maligna. So polygons these multi-sided structures here. Um, what about this one? This was a lesion that uh, came up in a gentleman's face. Well, he had lots of lesions on his face. But these, of course, were all seborrheic keratosis, and then he had this one thrown in here as well. It looked like a sep K, but it wasn't rough. It the same color, but when you had to look at it, um, with the dermatoscope, here's your accentuated perifollicular pigmentation, some gray dots tending to form gray circles um, up here. And uh, though you might think that's a polygon, um, they're not quite as reliable in distinguishing lentigo maligna on the face as they are elsewhere. But this was a lentigo maligna melanoma in situ. Then this one here. Swiftly have a little look at it. This was the clinical lesion. Difficult to say what it was unless you put your dermatoscope on it. Then you put your dermatoscope on it and up come these gray circles here of lentigo maligna. Now remember not all gray circles um, on facial lesions are going to be lentigo maligna. The four differentials, pigmented solar keratosis, pigmented intraepidermal carcinoma, solar lentigo, <coughs> and a lichen planus like the keratosis. Most solar lentigos, in fact, don't give uh, gray circles. Um, 
I really shouldn't have that in there, my apologies. Um, it's lentigo maligna, lichen planus like keratosis, pigmented IEC, and uh, a pigmented solar keratosis. We'll get that changed in the blog immediately. I like putting in mistakes. We both uh, learn from that. Now, this one, another one of God's little mistakes. This lesion was terribly obvious. Um, you stick your dermatoscope on it, varying pigmentation, stick your dermatoscope, rhomboid structures, rhomboid structures, perifollicular pigmentation, accentuation around the pseudo network here, florid features of a lentigo maligna. However, there was this lesion up here. And in point of fact, this was an amelanotic melanoma. I sent it to the plastic surgeon instead of this excise. He said, I'll excise this BCC that she has up there as well. When he excised it, it was an amelanotic melanoma. I didn't manage to get my, a picture. I'll get my dermatoscope on it. I was so busy looking at this and then dealing, biopsying and dealing with this. Always look around. If they've got one pigmented lesion that's suspicious, they may well have something else. So lastly, let's have a little look at the histology of lentigo maligna. Uh, proliferation of atypical melanocytes along the dermoepidermal junction, and that's what you're seeing here, and accentuation down the hair follicles, which is what you're seeing here. This is a lot of pigment in melanophages, melanin pigment here. Um, here you may sometimes have some little nests in a lentigo maligna as well, but not many. Mostly it's this linear type of proliferation of atypical melanocytes down the follicles. So there we go, lentigo maligna, this is the pathology of it. Always be aware of these lesions in an aging population we're seeing more and more and more of them. Pick them up early and you'll uh, treat them early, normally with excision with at least five millimeter margins. Sometimes because of the diffuse melanocytic change you in fact need 10 millimeter margins for these. So uh, it's worthwhile giving them a, a decent margin when you're, in fact, cutting them out. Other treatment modalities include a micromond. Cryotherapy really isn't uh, a goer. But essentially, it's surgery or a micromond, and we're still waiting to see what the end result of a micromond will be. So lentigo maligna, gray circles, facial lesions, warning sign, and consider the other differentials. Thank you very much.